As a true futurist, the then Andhra Chief Minister promised to turn Hyderabad into Cyberabad by 2000. And deliver, he did. At the beginning of the millennium, the Davos-based World Link magazine had included Chandrababu Naidu Garu in its dream cabinet of political leaders. A pioneer in putting technology at the heart of development, he gained the moniker Cyber Babu of Hyderabad. It was Mr. Naidu who had envisioned high-tech hubs a decade before they became a norm. And here is that iconic image of Mr. Chandrababu Naidu from 1998, if you can have the image up on the screen, when the then Prime Minister, Atal Bihari Vajpayee, had inaugurated High Tech City. There it is. He's truly our first technocrat chief minister. Today, Mr. Naidu remains bullish on technology being the driving force to develop and transform India. May I invite Mr. Chandra Babu Naidu now for a conversation with our senior editor, Shavan Sen, on technocracy for democracy. Shavan. Ladies and gentlemen, I think so. After the lunch session, I think so all of you would basically agree that as Indians, we have a massive appetite when it comes to anything political. And what better than to start with one of the tallest leaders of our country. And as they say, by the turn of the millennium, he was already being referred to as the Cyber Babu of Hyderabad. And he has certainly many firsts, and it's truly a big privilege to have Chandra Babu Naidu speaking to us. He rarely nowadays appears before the media. So th thank you, Mr. Naidu, for joining us at this point in time. And let me also take our audience through some of the first that we're talking about. Former longest serving chief minister of undivided Andhra Pradesh, first chief minister of the state after the bifurcation. And of course, uh, he's a pioneer in many ways because uh, he's the state's youngest assembly member and the youngest minister at 28. Thank you very much, uh, Chandrababu Naidu, for speaking to this audience here. Let me straight away begin you, by asking you, you were always being referred to as the technocrat CM when many of your counterparts at that point in time would have never thought about a laptop. And the image of Chandrababu Naidu walking into the assembly with that laptop perhaps is the most uh, endearing image of any politician. You were ahead of the curve. Let's begin with that. How did it all start? How did you really envision the fact that Hyderabad is going to be the IT hub? No, thank you very much. Respected audience and friends, today I am very happy to share some of my thoughts with the uh, Republic TV con conclave, very good subject, time of transformation. You are all aware, after economic reforms, immediately technology revolution has come. We started economic reforms in 1991. I am very happy to associate with you all or remind you all we started second generation reforms. All infrastructure projects, you name any infrastructure for that matter, either roads, national highways, first proof of concept has started from Chennai to Nellore. You name telecommunication sector, deregulation. At that time, the then Prime Minister gave a report that is a deregulation of telecommunication sector. Today we are very happy India is uh, taking lead in telecommunication and also IT sector. First power project in private sector has been started in Andhra Pradesh. 
first sky, open sky policy first flight from emirates to hyderabad like that if you see greenfield airport also hyderabad all these things we are able to do we are able to initiate at that time as i rightly mentioned technology always i am thinking from the beginning i thought it will bring revolution today information technology has become a backbone for a knowledge economy here i wanted to tell all, all of us as to think great time for india recently we celebrated 75 years independence another 25 years we are going to celebrate 100 years independence that is 2047 my idea is india is having very good advantage as of now one is technology maturity we can say indians are so strong in technology that is our usp second is we are having an advantage of demographic dividend recently united nations has given a assessment that is the factual report now we are having highest population in the world not only that young india 40% of population are below 25 years this is the biggest advantage for india this is a deadly combination as i rightly mentioned at that time i started technology and also reforms hyderabad is a proof of concept your name information technology we are number 1 and also now some other states are also doing extremely well we have gone for biotechnology park genome valley recent covid vaccine has been manufactured from the tar genome valley and also if you go for pharma we are able to develop very well with infrastructure if you see outer ring road six lane road with service roads connecting to metro everything that is the biggest assessment for hyderabad for growth story even airport first of its kind green field these are all the things today we are very happy after bifurcation also telangana is getting highest per capita income in india now in future also it will grow like this here i wanted to say one thing one is hyderabad story that is a proof of concept all these things happened within 20 25 years time and also indians all over the world they are doing extremely well highest per capita income as on today our nris all over the world 32 million as on today every year 2.5 million people are migrating it is a big advantage for us win win situation if you see diaspora contribution last year according to rbi report 100 billion whereas china it is only 20 25 billion so if you go through all these things in the history how it is happening china at one stage 14.2% growth that is in 2007 recently it has fallen nearly 2.4% 2020 now it has uh, again this year it is only 3% there is a demographic disadvantage for china not only china for so many countries for that matter 25 years if you see history we have grown eight times and also if you see further if you grow next 25 years nine times we can cross germany and also uh, and also uh, japan if you grow 11 to 12 percent we will cross america if you grow 15 to 16 percent we will cross china but if you see further data at the last 40 25 years we have grown eight times china has grown 25 times now 49 times 
If you grow 15 to 16 times, another 25 years time, we will be number one economy. As a political party head, my vision is, my dream is for this country, we must be number one or two economy at the time of 100 years independence. This is where we have to prepare vision. Technology is matured. We are having an advantage of demographic dividend. We have to manage demographic management also in future. Then no country will match with us. That is the strength of India. Mr. Naidu, can I then ask you this question? Because a lot that you have essentially spoken about is in sync what the Prime Minister has been talking about. And perhaps uh, one of those few political parties outside the NDA fold today is basically talking about the 2047 vision. What are we to really make of it? Chandrababu Naidu is essentially now thinking of coming back to the NDA fold. Is that what we are looking at? No, what I am saying, you are all always you are talking about politics. We are, we are having different political parties. But at the same time, those who are having vision will have same approach, same visualization. What is wrong? PM is thinking in that direction. Why can't I also contribute? All leaders, politics is one, development is another. Country is permanent, society is permanent. For that, everybody has to dream, has to work to make India as number one. That is my goal. Indians should be number one globally. That is my ambition. I think so. Everyone and in the audience. Where I am working from the beginning, if you see, I. I think so. Everyone in the audience would agree because. Today, whenever we see when the opposition parties essentially talk about what's really happening in our country, they say that we are slipping. We are completely slipping. We have you saying that you've exuded confidence not once, but many a times on multiple platforms. In fact, in the G20 uh, all party leaders meeting, in the presence of the Prime Minister, you had then said nobody can beat us on information technology or digital technology. World's and India will emerge as the world's largest or second largest economy globally by 2047. That point in time also many would say that your position was never in sync with what the opposition parties are today saying. How do you position yourself then? No, what I am asking you one question. Politics is one. Country is one. Every political party we are working for the country development future of this great nation. I quoted all these things. I developed 25 years back. 1995, I started information technology. Second generation economic reforms. At that time, nobody visualized all these things. Even so many friends are there. I conducted CIA meetings first time in Hyderabad continuously for five years. I went to Davos to know what is happening globally and also integrate our economy. I am, I am requesting you one thing. Nobody visualized at the time I visualized telecommunication sector. Then I convinced the then Prime Minister Vajpayee ji. He accepted. That is how revolution started. And also your uh, national highways. I went to Malaysia at that time. Malaysia, two crore population, eight lane road. I traveled that road. Then I asked the Prime Minister, then he said, where is money? Then I requested him, it is only a policy, public policy. You create a BOT, BOT, all these policies. Then today, proof of concept is Nellore to Chennai. Today, you are seeing roads. Now we are progressing. Wealth creation is important. And at the same time, how to eradicate poverty also, we have to plan now because of technology age. So there is no disagreement for anybody. Either PM is viewing the same thing. Why can't I also view the same thing? I can implement what all possible in my territory. So you completely there endorse... There won't be any conflict. There, there should not be any conflict. So you completely endorse, Mr. Yes. Naidu, correct me if I'm wrong, but you completely endorse the vision that the Prime Minister has for the country. 
Is that the right assessment? Yes, I entirely agree with Prime Minister, its vision. I will associate my state, my people, Telugu people, to achieve that vision, to take forward. As a matter of fact, first more advantage Telugu people are having at that head at the time. Now, among Indians in America, 30 to 35 percent are from Andhra Pradesh. Highest per capita income, 1 lakh 24 thousand dollars, US dollars per capita income of Indians, whereas Americans 64 thousand. Even at that time, opposition parties opposed me. So, Mr. That Naidu, is my vision. That is where I am saying India will become number one or two. Mr. Naidu, you have travelled extensively and, and that is the reason why a lot of these ideas that you implemented back in Hyderabad. Today when you travel outside and if you juxtapose this, the days that you used to travel back in the 90s, how is it that the world is viewing right now as far as India is concerned, India's growth is concerned. What do you have to say about that? No, I don't have any inhibition, I'm telling you. Present Prime Minister Narendra Modi has gone all over the world. He promoted India. Our world has recognized India's strength now. This is where, when I was a CM, I used to request they, then the Prime Ministers and also Presidents also. Networking is important. That networking, that goodwill has been created by Prime Minister. Really, we are thankful to him on behalf of, as a citizen of this great country. There is no second thought in that. Yeah, I'll take that liberty of perhaps sharing something. When I met Chandrababu Naidu last time, as a reporter, you always expect some sort of news to really come out of it. Chandra Babu Naidu in my last meeting essentially spoke about less of politics, but he spoke about his new passion. He says this new passion is building an app on nutrition and the fact on sports. Yet another issue, Chandra Babu Naidu, that is in sync with, again, what the Prime Minister has been talking about, Kelo India, and these are aspects, once again, I'm trying to bring before our audience, is in complete sync with what the Bharatiya Janta Party is essentially saying, led by the Prime Minister. No, what I am saying here, <laughs> go ahead, Mr. Naidu. Mr. Sain, can I talk? Yes, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Yeah. What I am saying, we, we are now beginning of infinity. I am using this word, word for all of you. Beginning of infinity. Reason is, Indians are having capacity to deliver, to provide leadership. That is one. Second, technology is matured. You want to do anything, you can get it done. That is the capacity, that is the technology is available, knowledge is available. That is where I am saying, Knowledge and platform is technology through Uberization. We can provide services, goods, everything. That is where I told you last time, I am, a, I am having a passion to develop one app, that is one project, Nutriful. By, through Nutriful, I want to go for preventive health. It is a trust, NGO, it is doing that work. Now I am working on the project, as on today, 35,000 people are enrolled. Every day we are monitoring all these things. I, I, I am having an idea in that food as a medicine, kitchen as a pharmacy. Everybody is aware what you eat, that matters always. So we are working micronutrients, nutrients, everything balancing, testing again with medical reports. So many things we are working in that. I want to go for preventive health in future. This is where I am saying knowledge on, tech, on technology platform uberization. We will give excellent uh, these things. Now today you are seeing uh, IoT devices have come. Originally I used to talk at that time 
they used to say you have to keep chip in your body all these things now i wrote devices in my hand there is a ring this will give all the sleep score and also your body readiness or activity everything even your apple watch all these things are coming now ultra human sensor this is where technologies are progressing we have to adopt everything even on health education and so many areas even agriculture all these things we have to do but mr naidu when when you hear the opposition parties essentially talking about the way india is going they certainly do not say what you are essentially saying you saying that you are saying that today india is well received outside and it is time perhaps to ditch that western conspiracy the western thought process that the opposition essentially wants to adopt so i want to ask you what is it that you would like to tell the opposition because there was a point in time that you were also trying to stitch non bjp parties together but today it seems your thought process is very different than the opposition because the, the opposition the says completely different no at that time also i never opposed on his policies i opposed only special status all these things we had a sentiment after bifurcation that was my issue i am telling you today another thing is all of you are there i am having this idea also as on today america and also europe they are having 50% middle class families as on today india around 31% middle class families which means 5 to 30, 5 to 30 lakhs income a year it will go 63% by 2047 my idea is why should we remain that 30, 37% by 2047 in india everybody should be above middle class that will be our pledge how to do that even there is csr every poor family can we make a planning this is where i am giving a policy pppp four p's public private people partnership you mentor one or more families of every person who are above middle class or middle class you give management bandwidth for him mentoring him have a vision for short term medium term long term by 2047 india should have no poor people and also everybody should be above power poverty or middle class and above is it possible through technology now every family we can have a data i am very happy earlier we had a problem today you are seeing we are progressing like anything in technology if you see here aadhar what what nobody is having this advantage in the world no, but and mr naidu the fact that you you are raise you you are laying out this of what is really working for the country in terms of the policies that have been brought in do you personally believe that the policies that have been brought in yeah. by the modi government has essentially helped the country to see that spur in the growth do you believe that that's that's the key yeah that is there that is what i am saying india is having two advantages i told you very clearly one is digital strength usp second is demographic dividend this will continue up to 27 even narendra modi ji is giving policies that policies if you can fine tune and further it will be unique then i am telling you we can eradicate poverty every family should be above middle class middle and above that is possible through technology that is where i am saying public private people's partnership for peace even there is csr csr can spend one corporate basing on his bandwidth and resources 100 fa- one family or more families or 100 families not one time he have to do up to reasonable level above middle class they have to, uh, above poverty middle class and above they have to come this is possible in knowledge economy that is what i am saying 
टुडे आधार इज देयर डिजिटल बैंकिंग फाइनेंसिंग इज देयर डिजी लॉकर हेल्थ एंड आल्सो डिजिटल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इज ए 5G इज कमिंग इंडिया इज नंबर 1 इन टर्म्स ऑफ डिजिटल करेंसी पेमेंट्स इवन ऑर्डिनरी पर्सन इफ यू सी पुश कार्ट हु इज हैविंग पुश कार्ट इज यूजिंग Paytm और Google Pay और फोन पे एंड ऑल्सो इवन टी को टी स्टॉल इज एबल टू डू बेटर वर्क बिकॉज ऑफ नो कैश ऑल दिस थिंग हैंडलिंग बट जस्ट टू दैट इज रेयर वी आर हैविंग सो मेनी एडवांटेजेस नाउ but but mm. just to just to quote a few opposition leaders when they say about digital india on the floor of the parliament you've had s- some opposition leaders essentially saying that it's not a workable solution in fact you had spoken about it back in 1999 that there is a need for digital india when you hear this kind of comments coming in from the opposition leaders what is it that you would like to tell them no all these people at that time also criticized me i i always i spoke about vision 2020 they blamed me i am 420 i am telling you i took that blame also at that time <laughs> today that vision 2020 has become a reality in hyderabad in telangana so what is it that they are this calling you i am now? asking all of you to prepare vision 2047 but Chal- no what i am saying at that time they opposed the cell phones i am telling you now i am asking them anybody is not, anybody is not using cell phone can you tell me what is this it that where i am quoting the word is wife is living without a husband husband is living without a wife but everybody wants cell phone <laughs> they cannot live without cell phone it has become a essential product what is it that they used to tell you at that point in time because as i said even when we were growing up in our growing up years when we saw those front page pictures of chandra babu naidu walking with that laptop at that point in time a lot of people were raising this question what exactly is he trying to do i want you to share at least one anecdote at that point in time when you brought in and what is it your counterparts were actually telling you what did they call you i'm i'm at that time everybody told me heckled me here is a man he want cell phone no food like that one example i am giving you i wanted to meet bill gates he came to delhi then i asked the appointment through his embassy american embassy they refused to give me appointment they said he is not meeting politicians then i said no no i, I am having some work i want to meet him and convince him then they said come and join cocktail party then i said no i won't come to cocktail party if i come they will blame me i am also in the party all these things then great difficulty he gave me 10 minutes before going to dinner he spent with me 45 minutes i gave powerpoint presentation first of all then he is totally impressed then he asked me what you want then i told him only one thing we are very strong in information technology british people left as english traditionally we are very strong in mathematics that is a deadly combination for information technology then he said i, I agree with you india indians are ex- doing extremely well in information technology what can i do then i told him you develop your development center in hyderabad that is my desire that is my uh, request for you then he said uh, only i am in seattle if at if at all i come out of hyderabad i will come to uh, see out of seattle i will come to hyderabad then all the way i went to seattle all the way i went to meet so many times in davos finally i got microsoft to hyderabad what is the interest not for my interest it is in the interest of com- community youngsters future generation Chandra Babu Naidu I also want to talk about one aspect when you envisioned this entire Hyderabad concept 
you had to pay a political price for it at some point in time because at that point in time everyone thought a chief minister can only be populist in nature this debate is once again back the prime minister says that in today's time you can't have the dravidi culture you were against it at that point in time too you said the populist schemes do not work but at some point in time you had to reverse that you had to finally reverse that because you were paying a political price for it so no. where do you stand on that front because this culture of freebies no. you never agreed but finally you had to succumb no 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 what i am saying two aspects here one is wealth creation without wealth creation you cannot distribute wealth or you can give freebies poverty is a curse all of us has to agree for that now without welfare even an american government is not surviving they are giving different type of welfare health insurance or uh, other insurance all these things they are giving what i am saying give welfare and also hand hold them for eradication of poverty this is where i am saying for peace public private people partnership ordinary member i want to make it extraordinary member poor people i want to make them middle class and above or if possible crorepathy it is possible five to 30 lakhs income then automatically will become crorepathy why can't you do that i am not against free bees while doing all these things we have to eradicate poverty permanently then only sustainable economy and also people will have respect to live chadwavan i do we are looking at elections round the corner so i need to at least get your ideas on what's really happening right now in andhra pradesh a, a direct question to you do you really one more thing regret? i want to tell and then uh, finally you can ask your question yeah please go no ahead. no i am i want to say one more thing now gst has become a reality and also digital currency is a reality earlier people opposed even gst now transparency has come revenue is increasing and also in future it will increase further evasion will reduce even any evasion tracking is very easy i wanted to request government also all political parties and also all of you to abolish this 500 and above currency either 2000 rupees all these things then in elections we won't spend this type of money distribution of money all these things purchase of votes all these things then transparency will come in politics anyway companies and individuals are contributing political bonds are in check that is how we have to build economy in this country if you control political corruption or political donations or distribution of money in elections it will go a long way for the country this is one more require proposal i am making now it may happen today or tomorrow but that is my proposal for the country for all the ideas to be implemented uh, chandra babu naidu i think so you'll still have to be in power so i want to ask you this question do you really regret leaving the nda fold or you would say that you were misled at that point in time because you personally seem to have a lot of liking for the prime minister do you have any regrets no what i am saying from the beginning if you see earlier also i am not for power even wajpayee period at that time he offered me 7 to 8 ministers i never uh, uh, accepted all these things but i will work with you for the development of the nation that was my stand at the time also so politics is different and at the same time development is different where is there is a development i want to associate with that and move forward so for the development of the nation are you willing to join hands no all hypothetical questions i don't want to answer now <laughs> this is not the forum because everyone today i think so everyone in the audience is completely convinced chandra babu naidu because sometimes it feels that there is almost a very similar match 
with the manifestos of your party and the Bharatiya Janata Party. So why perhaps shy away from the fact that you are basically looking for working for the nation and why not really come back to power and perhaps be with the, the Bharatiya Janata Party because you've, you've, done that, you've done that in the Port Blair Municipal Councils also and at that point in time people asked what, really, what is changing. You've done it once more. So are you open to the idea? Are you open to the idea? Elections are around no. the corner. Pawan Kalyan being the other factor. Are you open to the joining hands once again? No, I am having my agenda. One is Indians should be on the globally very strong number one community. Among them, 30 to 35 percent Telugu people. That will happen. I want to put Telugu people and Indians above Jewish. As on today, Jewish are having more wealth compared to Indians, but at the same time, per capita wise, we are dominating Jewish also as on today. Somebody, some sh we should have some ambition. That is my ambition. Second one, I want to see Andhra Pradesh, poverty less society. Everybody should become middle class and above by 2047. That is my vision. That is where I want to work in the direction. By giving welfare and development and at the same time I want to achieve this. Wherever it is needed for the country, I am always working for that. No cause of shy away. We will so you are saying you are not averse to the idea. You are not averse to the idea of an alliance, at least not what you were basically trying to stitch no. earlier in 2019. No, saying, so you want to forget what I'm that saying for, for No, uh, what all PM is doing, then uh, positive things, if I support, that is what uh, endorsement. So you, that is you, how uh, everybody has to work uh, together for this great country's growth story. So on that note, I can safely say, Chandra Babu Naidu, you are not averse to any developments taking place, at least from the NDA Alliance point of view. No, what I am saying, all these things, it is a matter of time. No, there, there is what enough is time, Chandra Babu Naidu. I think but everyone my wants idea to hear is this. Two aspects I told you. Because. The fact of the matter is no, that today you cannot shy I'm away from saying everyone. that you have openly, you have openly endorsed the Prime Minister, you have openly endorsed the 2047 vision and to be fair to you, to be fair to you, you are a visionary leader and today India needs visionary leader, we have one, there is no harm if we have one more visionary leader joining hands. No, what I am saying, what all PM is visualizing, I totally endorse it. And also, I wanted to support totally. Country is important compared to politics, I am telling you. Thank you very much. As, as we say here in Republic TV, Chandra Babu Naidu, nation first. I think so that should be the motto for everyone. Thank you very much once again for this conversation. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Anand. RP Sanjeev Goenka Group presents Republic Summit Time of Transformation co-powered by Robin Group manufacturers of electric cables and solar systems bharosa rakho surakshit raho Mind Super App and Beyond LIC har pal aapke saath Knowledge Partner Amrita Vishwa Vidyapeetham Education for Life Education for Living Infrastructure Partner Rungta Steel TMT Bar ekdam solid MSME Partner, You Grow Capital Defence Partner, Paras Defence and Space Technologies Limited, a premier defence engineering company Healthcare Partner, Scanray, Nothing is Opaque Travel Partner, Ease My Trip, Take It Easy Nutrition Partner, Skir Up, the protein superfood of Vikings Prayer Partner, Z Black 3-in-1 Premium Agarbatti, Prathana Hogi Swikar with him for the last year and a half, two years, the way he looks at birth charts, the way he looks at deadlines, the way he looks at execution capability, and his constant refrain 
that India has had multiple governments that have announced multiple schemes. We do not want to announce any more schemes. We want to make sure that the schemes that we have announced attain a hundred percent saturation across the length and breadth of our country. And so he pushes each one of us. Where are you on that path of 100% saturation? Where are you on that path in providing capable service to our people through government schemes? And that's the Philip that civil aviation has gone through in the last nine years. If you truly ask me, give me one word of the change of civil aviation in the last nine years. The one word that has happened in India in civil aviation is the democratization of civil aviation. Nagar Vimanan ka lok tantri karan ye no saal mein hua hai. What was earlier seen as an elitist service, a service for a few, Prime Minister Modi has democratized that with Ude Desh ka aam nagrik, the people that we heard about, the aspirations that were imprisoned in glass bottles. Those aspirations today, no pun intended, are actually soaring high when people through a government subsidized program can fly by air as opposed to going